live from Eurosonic Noorderslag. Buma Music meets Tech two days of uh, interviews about music and technology. Uh, day two is mainly about uh, uh, startups in uh, the music and uh, technology uh, field. Um, we talk uh, with a member of the jury today. Uh, who are you and what do you do? My name is Monique van Dusseldorp and I'm a conference curator. So I put together speakers and programs for conferences, seminars, all kinds of events. And um, I actually quite often also do jury work because it's a bit the same. Okay, so you're, you're an, um, an, 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 a jury with um, a lot of expertise then. Um, <coughs> It's, it's today. Uh, I try to project it. Feel, yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, today, 12, uh, 12 startups in in in, um, uh, in the music field. Uh, in general, what do you look for when you look uh, at, at at startups? Well, I must say, the first thing that that strikes you when you visit all these startups that are over here is that, I mean. I like the energy. I mean, I think it's such, so brave that this music industry that's already com seems to be completely defined by the Apples and the YouTubes, and and then you still think, whoa, this is fun. I'm going to start something completely new. Yeah. And so the first thing is, you know, really good energy, really real passion for the topic, and you need it because it's a, such a tough field to work in. Yeah. yeah. So, but you need a little bit of naivety as well. Somehow, yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, I have the feeling that quite a few of these startups are working on, on a very tiny bit of what can be a big company. They will not themselves be the big company, but they work very hard on the very tiny bit. Yeah. Which can lead to yeah. heartbreak and sorrow, but you never know, you know. Yeah. No, Let's I be always, optimistic. I, I, yeah, I always, <laughs> always tell people, I, mean, uh, I, I love music myself as well, but I always, I would never do a music startup because uh, there's the rights issues and all the stuff most of the time you get, yes, so it's so complicated. It's, it, but strangely enough, we are now at a stage where some of the rights issues have been sorted out in the sense that uh, Spotify, for instance, is now a tool for startups to use. To build because, upon. Yeah, so the, Spotify has it. You know, they sorted the rights, it's paid, so, and then the startups say, okay, I've got a new kind of recommendation engine, or I, um, see, so the building blocks are a lot bigger, and for some startups, that's actually very useful. Yeah, yeah. You know, hey. you can embed any video, and you can, you can yeah. pull things together that are sorted, yeah. Yeah, so you don't have to sort that yourself yeah. anymore because like uh, someone from Spotify two years ago said you need two years to sort all the rights. So you need a lot of money if you are want to be a, Which a means Spotify you need Spotify or some other yeah. organization. Yeah, to sort that. No hey, hey, it, um, uh, looking at um, uh, uh, the startups or the startups in, in, in the music field, do you see uh, certain uh, trends over there? What they are focusing well, on? Well, I mean, two of the startups here are standing there with uh, virtual reality classes. I think it's... I mean, the virtual reality is one of those things where the jury is not out yet. It's really interesting. It's obviously huge companies are investing in it. But we still need to work out when people want to use it. And will people actually buy a ticket for a VR conference experience, for instance? Yeah. I mean, will you be this close to yeah. your hero and sitting on the stage rather than at the back row yeah. in, in some big stadium. And do, I think that's more, an and do we do it more than once? That's what exactly. I ask always. Is it just always. a gimmick? Yeah. yeah, it's just a gimmick. Oh, attention, have a look. Do you do you watch more than five minutes? I've yeah. never done more than five minutes no. of VR myself. No, to be quite honest, so. I st but, but like you say, there's so much money and belief going on that yes. uh, I must be wrong, I assume, but I still <laughs> think it's a sort of a, uh, I, I don't see the, the use case uh, so far uh, that this will uh, be more than a, than a gimmick as well. It's a little bit like 3D TV, you know, yeah. everybody was like, like oh, wow. and by the way, nobody used True. it. But, Gone. you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think, but maybe yeah. maybe you are wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so, um, and, and is, 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 is business uh, op opportunities an important one for you, or do you say? Yes, I mean, uh, what I ask every startup here is, you know, what are the plans? You know, are you bootstrapping? Do you have investors? Um, are you going international? Is this a model that can work if you only do the Netherlands or if you only do one particular country? Or do you actually need a, the whole of Europe or, or even more? Um, otherwise, it's not a real startup. Then it's just, you know, it's like, like me. A good freelancer with a nice hobby and uh, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with it, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey, thanks very much, and uh, well, uh, good luck with uh, with the jury. We will be seeing them all, all twelve uh, over here uh, later on as well. And uh, we hear uh, end of the afternoon uh, what the jury. Uh, the said. winner, the okay. winner. Okay, okay thank okay, you very much. Uh, thank you for watching now, and uh, like we said, the rest of the day uh, startups uh, uh, over here, and you can watch them all later on uh, on demand. Thanks. 